Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I've got an amazing piece of machining history to share with you this week. I've got an 80, it's 80 year old uh, machinist box. The fact that it still exists at all is amazing, let alone the condition of the things that are inside of this. It's really, it's really jaw dropping in my opinion. I think it's a phenomenal piece and I can't wait to share it with you. I've waited about a year and a half to share this with you. So. Let me get you in a little closer. I'll show you this box and then, you know, we'll get to the goods, which is what's inside this thing. Hello, little girl. You want me to throw it again? Okay, I will, but you gotta let go first. Oh, let go. So back in the day, quality tools were put in wood boxes. And the reason for that is because shops and stuff weren't normally con uh, temperature controlled and wooden boxes done a really good job of protecting precision tools and stuff that, that they housed or that was kept inside of them and this box has done just that. It's got some dents and dings and blemishes and burns from people's smokes and the plating's coming off the hardware. This nicely leather wrapped handle, the leather's all dried out and cracking on it. Let me get you a shot around this box before I start opening this thing up. We'll go through it drawer by drawer. So I know that some of you have noticed a pattern. This is actually a do-all gauge box and do-all labeled or badged a ton of different items. Now, I'm not for sure who made the things, parts in this box, but do-all is the one who badged it. Now, around this thing, there are five latches to hold the lid closed. And I'm guessing that this box at this moment probably weighs about 35 pounds, maybe 40 pounds. So in the top of this box, it's got a tag here, says do all inspection laboratory. This is serial number 304. So that's a pretty low serial number for this box. And it's date of manufacture is eight month, eighth month of 1944. Pretty neat, pretty neat. So first items up in the top, we have a monochromatic light. This is used with other items that are in this box that we'll get to here in just a second. But this thing, is in extremely good condition. Let's get it out and get a quick look at it. So check out that fiber wrapped cord with a Bakelite plug, no ground. So definitely old. Let's get it plugged, plugged in. And this light source is used because it's of a specific wavelength. It's used with optical flats. So it works. Check out uh, the badging on the top of this light. So do all mono light interference bands are 0 0.000016 of an inch. 110 volt AC serial number 320 Continental Machines Inc. Minneapolis, Minnesota. It is a beautiful light. So also in the top of this box is another wooden box that is labeled do all gauges, probably the same type of wood that the actual box is made out of. Let me show you what's in this box. This thing, probably at least five pounds, six pounds. So inside this box is basically a huge gauge block and it is called a do all master flat. That's what's inscribed on it. And basically, this is a huge gauge block. It doesn't have a speck of rust on it, top, bottom, sides. It's in perfect condition. As far as I can tell, it's in perfect condition. And that's one reason why I'm wearing gloves, because all the stuff in this box is in such good shape. I'd hate to be the guy since 1944 who puts their hands on it and gets it all rusty and crusty. These wooden boxes have protected this stuff uh, very well. And plus, it's covered in like a cosmoline as well. It's got a layer of grease on it. If you don't know what this is, it's just a extremely flat piece of steel. It's a huge gauge block. 
very, very nice. So if you want to check something, stack some gauge blocks, get a super precision in measurement, you'd use this. It's a miniature steel surface plate, basically. So now that you've seen what's in the top of the box, let's get into the real good stuff down, down here in the lower section. So in this top drawer, we have a few items that I'm not exactly for sure what they are. And I'm going to rely on my guys in the comments that I know have some more experience in this metrology deep down as far as this thing goes than I do. So if you would, leave down in the comments what these items here are. There's three of them. And on each corner, they're labeled 1-1, 2-2, 3-3, and 4-4. Four, four. And they've got a Bakelite handle to isolate the heat of the user's hand from the gauge itself. Now all of these tools would be used in a temperature controlled room and they'd be used to check the accuracy of your precision tools and then carefully put back in the drawer so they don't get scuffed and beat around and they maintain their accuracy. So we've got a five inch master sign bar. Looks to be in immaculate condition. Check that thing out. I don't know that it's ever even been used. They didn't even have scuffs on the rolls. So, beautiful five inch sign bar. And then we have parts that you would use in conjunction with a height gauge, which I'll show you in just a second. Finely lapped, this is a three quarter of an inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. It's got several of the same ones, just used for different purposes, I guess. Really, really neat. A nominal 0.7 inch and then a gauge here, and I don't know if you use these two together or what. You guys fill me in. What would you use this gauge for? It has a plus and a minus and an accuracy of 0 0.00001 inch. Let me show you these awesome optical flats. So these optical flats, they're used to gauge the flatness of an item. And they have a known, this one has a known accuracy of 0 0.00002 inch. So that is pretty accurate. And then this one is twice as accurate as the first one, 0 0.00001 inch. So really nice. Check out the labeling around that. Do all optical flat. We'll try one of these out in just a second. So this top drawer has a base for a height gauge. You can see, just beautifully made. So not a scuff mark on it. Even the finish is, uh, is in great condition. It's got that uh, crinkled coat finish. And it is one inch as far as its thickness. I gotta let Cora in, she's knocking on the door. Okay, little girl, come on in. I missed you too. I missed you too. So like I mentioned, the thickness of this base is one inch, and you could take that to the bank, that that is one inch. And then you use the base along with the uprights, like this. This is the shortest one. It hooks onto the base, and then you stack your gauge blocks, your precision uh, gauge blocks in here along with one of the pointers that we've seen in the first drawer, and that gives you a super accurate height, height gauge made to use with gauge blocks. We've got uh, several different uh, height uh, uprights, I guess you'd call it, labeled dual gauge, and they are in excellent condition. Let me show you this set of parallels here. Dual gauge, master parallel, and we have a set here. And you can assure that they are the same as far as their height. So in the bottom of this box would have been a gauge quality set of dual gauge blocks, but unfortunately they're missing. 
but there's a note in here that tells why they're missing, which I think has got a really cool factor on its own. So it says the job gauge block set, uh, serial number, whatever the serial number was for this gauge block set, has been sent to something gauges for calibration and certification. Something to the 19, or to the 920, 1944 calibration. So they were getting sent to be checked. And Lawrence is the guy that sent them. So something 1920, 1944 calibration chart was also sent. So Lawrence, what happened to the gauge block set that you sent to calibration? Why didn't you get them back? It's only been, what, 66 years since that happened? So pretty neat. You know, there's a note in here that explains why they're missing, uh, but unfortunately they're not here. We got a uh, glass jar with some lubricant in there, I guess some preservative that you wipe on the gauges to keep them from rusting. And I'm assuming this is what's on them and it's done an excellent job because nothing in this box even has a hint of rust on it. And a couple more spots here that I'm not exactly for sure what would have went in there. So unfortunately the gauge blocks are missing, but we did get a cool note and a little explanation as to why they're missing. Now, I do have a set of AA Dewall gauge blocks. Let me quickly show those to you so I can still use this stuff. So check out this gauge block set. It is in a really nice wood, retro wood grain Bakelite case, and it's uh, A+, plus, not AA, A+. Plus. And it is almost complete, not in the best shape in the world, but plenty good enough for you know, the work that I do. So there is a set of gauge blocks that I can use in conjunction with the uh, with the uh, height gauge that is in this box. So do all gauge blocks for a do all gauge set. It's pretty neat. So let me do a quick little demo here. We've got our short stand and our our height stand height gauge base, and that slides on there like that. I've got a three quarter inch gauge block and a three quarter and a quarter inch pointer. So we could ring those together. It's amazing how they stick together like that when the surfaces are, are extremely accurate. There's no oil on that. That's just magic sticking those together. And then we can slide that stack in this holder, tighten it down. And because we know our the base is one inch, and then we have an inch on top of it, a three quarter inch gauge block and a quarter inch uh, pointer. So that from the top of the surface plate here to that pointer is two inches. Very, very close to two inches. So I'm all set up here. I've got my monochromatic light. I've got the optical flat resting on the master flat resting on my surface plate. And I want to read you a quick little article about optical flats so you get a better understanding of what they're used for. So an optical flat is an optical grade piece of glass that is lapped or polished to be extremely flat on one or both sides. Now this optical flat has an arrow on it and I'm assuming that that side facing down is the most accurate side. So usually within a few tenths of a nanometer, so a billionth of a meter. They're used with a monochromatic light source to determine the flatness or the surface accuracy of other surfaces, whether optical, metallic, ceramic, or otherwise by interference. When an optical flat is placed on another surface and illuminated, the light waves reflect off both the bottom surface of the flat and the surface it's resting on. This causes a phenomenon similar to a thin film interference. The reflected waves interfere, creating a pattern of interference fringes visible as light and dark bands. And you'll see those in just a second. The spacing between the fringes is smaller, where the gap is changing more rapidly, indicating a departure from flatness in one of the two surfaces. This is comparable to the contour lines one would find on a map. A flat surface is indicated by a pattern of straight parallel fringes with equal spacing, while other patterns indicate uneven surfaces. Two adjacent fringes indicate differences in elevation of one half of a wavelength of light used. So by counting the fringes, differences in elevation of the surface can be measured to better than one micrometer. So let me show you the fringes, the lines, 
that we will see on the top of this master flat and you'll see that this piece of steel is very, very flat. So there's our fringe lines on the 0 .00002 inch optical flat. You can see they're pretty straight, parallel. It's looking pretty good. Let me show you the light bands on the uh, 0 .00001 uh, flat. Hopefully they'll show up. Oh yeah. See how straight and parallel those lines are? That is telling me that this master flat is masterfully flat. Very impressive. All right, guys. That's it this week. Kind of a short video. Just didn't have much time this week to do, do a lot of filming. So I figured I'd share something with you that I thought was uh, pretty special. And the box like this and the contents, I think that is special, considering that it probably cost as much as a, uh, as a good piece of property, maybe a uh, house back in the day. I wouldn't doubt that a bit. So the fact that it exists at all, given how old it is and the condition that it's still in, almost flawless everything in there is just amazing to me and I figured some of you guys would find that uh, interesting as well so I guess that's it uh, for this week anyway thanks for watching viewers patrons subscribers anyone who's helped me out whatsoever it is much appreciated so that's it thanks for watching and we'll see you next time Mole girl we will we'll see him again probably pretty soon <laughs>